stuff going on that no one has control over, you know, right. there's a lot of frustration in, in, in a lot of stuff that going on that people, people outside not seeing, you know, we say the players are focused, they're ready to go, you know, but at the end of the day, as I said, stuff going on, you know, and it's so hard, you know, when you know you want to go to the World Cup and you, you want better for your country. Welcome Sports Nation to Sports DTM, the sports channel where we call sports down the middle. You can expect the latest in sports news, views and reviews from our resident analysts. No sports topic is too controversial and no team or player is above criticism. So just smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on our balanced offering of riveting sports content. And don't forget to like, share and leave a comment below. Welcome to Sports DTM. Welcome back, people. Welcome to another episode of Sports Down the Middle. Um, this time we have a very special guest, of course. Um, he plies his trade over there in Canada with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, Javien Brown, right back, also plays for the Reggae Boys. Javien, what's up, man? You know, just, just chilling, you know. Uh, good. Family is okay and everything is okay? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to make sure family is good first, you know. Before you yeah, be okay. yeah, yeah. There's a question that we ask everybody: What are the teams that you support? In terms of, in terms of, like everywhere in the world. Yeah, different sports: basketball, football, whatever. Oh yeah, so Manchester United is is my team. Yeah. You know, basketball. I don't really watch basketball like that, and I don't really watch football, so I'm not really have a specific team. Yeah. So tell us about yourself and you know growing up and how you got involved in football. And it's a it's a it's a long story, you know. It's from I was like at the age of eight, you know, mm -hmm. starting starting playing. You didn't know what you want to be there. You, you wasn't thinking about like professional wise. Professional, right? Yeah, you just wanted to play the sport because obviously you love it, you know. But growing up. In um in the ghetto, as people call it in Jamaica, you know, a lot of stuff happens that inspires me, you know. Also my mom was one of the person that inspired me, you know, because I was close to my mom or my dad. You know, my dad and my mom departed, you know, so I was I was with my mom, saw so some struggles that she went through, you know, to send me to school and stuff like that. And that must have been tough. No, I wouldn't say tough because you know there's there are people in the world that's going that 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 went through worse. Worse, you know, so yeah, that's true. I wouldn't say it was tough. I mean, it 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 was a challenge, but I wouldn't say it was tough. All right, you're now at the Vancouver Whitecaps. You played about twenty three games, two assists so far. How would you say the season have been going? I mean, the season has been going good for me. You know, um, my first year as a professional, you know, um, coming out of college, you know, I had I had to adapt real quick, you know. But you know, coaching staff and everyone here believed in me. You know, obviously, I played twenty three games. Not a lot of a lot of guys in the league played twenty three games or youngsters like me. You know, so yeah. there's more something that I've been I've been doing good. You know, and. There's always room for improvement, you know. I really try to stay focused on the tasks ahead. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't watch that. I played 23 games. If you didn't say it, I would even remember that I played 23 games. To be yeah. honest, yeah, know, yeah. I just, I just don't look at stuff like that. Yeah, um, we think you, you've been doing good. Um, we see that you, you play the wing back role and center back as well as well as right back. What's your favorite position? I mean, I did an interview earlier this year, earlier, like probably two, two, three weeks ago. And someone asked me the same question, but I wouldn't say I have a favorite position, you know, but wherever the coach put me on the field, I would just try to go out there and execute to the best of my ability. Um, you spoke about transitioning. Um, you're now 22 years old. How has it, you know, been like in Canada? How's the weather like? How's the food, etc.? 
<laughs> I mean, I've been living by myself for for a long time. You know, I yeah. went to college. I was staying there by myself. You know, different environment. Obviously, I think college helped me. You know, I don't know about anyone else because I've learned a lot when I went to went to college. Not about football alone, about life itself. You know, because if you think about football alone, like you won't get it. You know, it's 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 a whole life situation. It's a change. It's a whole jump from being in Jamaica to overseas. Everything is different. Um, we noticed that you've played in the USL with, with Treasure Coast. You're now in the MLS now. What's the difference between leagues? How good is the I mean, MLS compared? That, that, that team, Treasure Coast, was like a, um, a summer league. It wasn't actually the USL. You okay. know, it was like um, a summer summer tournament that college students play whenever their the season is done. Okay. And so the Bulls, that's a, that's a summer league as well? Or that was no, USL? That, that's college. Oh, that's college. That's college okay. Team, yeah. okay, great, great. But how good is MLS though? Uh, it's getting it's getting better each and every day. You know, <laughs> maybe a lot of people don't respect it, especially in Jamaica. But one thing I could tell them, there's some really good players in this league. You you may not even realize like if you don't if you don't watch if you don't, you don't watch the sport and see, but MLS man, it's it's a physical league, man. First thing you have to prepare yourself each and every day, you know, especially me as a youngster. I can't take a day off, you know, because these guys have their family to feed and they 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 want they want to win and they want to challenge. And the thing is MLS, there's no team in the league that can't be beaten. Like there's every team, every team could beat any team. So yeah. at any point you you could you could think that okay you're the best team in MLS and then boom and the next game the team at the bottom of the league beat you so you yeah, just very have to competitive beat yeah it's a very competitive league and it's a very physical league yeah and the spots you know available you know you're lucky you're one of the lucky ones to have a spot an international spot you know I think that's limited for the teams you know yeah I don't I don't so, know. I don't know all of those details. As I said to you, I don't really get into those type of stuff. I try to focus on what I have ahead of you me. You have to do, yeah. yeah. For persons that might not know you, what type of player are you? Um, firstly, um, I wouldn't say I'm the skill. I'm the most skillful player. That's not that's not my game, you know. Um, yeah, I could say that I try to work hard as possible. I try to give a hundred percent, you know, and I've still have a lot more to to learn in terms of like decision making but as i said as 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 i go forward you know i'll learn a lot you know i'm the type of player that i try to analyze each and every game that i play not to dwell on it much but you know you have to see that okay i make these mistakes and these mistakes and how you can better them uh, in in modern day football the, the full box or wing box are required to to do a lot of attacking what do you think is the best attribute, defending or attacking? I mean, firstly, it was defending, but now I see myself growing in, going forward. I try to do the work box to box. You know, as I said, I'm not the most skillful player, but, you know, I'm, I'm people say I'm fast. I don't I don't really, you know, do well on that. But, you know, I try to use my speed as my advantage. All right. What would you say is the best and the worst thing about being a professional footballer? The best thing is that, you know, you you see things that a lot of people would love to see in the world. You know, you experience yeah. a lot of stuff. You know, um, one of the worst things is that, like, you know, as I said, for me, basically, you can't even take a day off. You know, and it's commitment, a lot of commitment, like... Commitment, commitment, commitment. So basically, my life has been going to training, coming back home, chilling for the day. You know, I don't, I don't really do much. You know, yeah. yeah. Work, work, work. Yeah. Um, you made your debut for the national team in 2017. What was that experience like? Yeah, it was a great, it was a great experience. You know, playing, playing Money Cup, and then I went to play in Premier League. You know, and I got called. You know, trust me. 
there's a lot of competition, you know, still a lot of competition in the team. You know, we have some great players, you know. I love playing for my country, you know, but yeah. at the end of the day, I would have to just, if anything, I would just, I'm just here to whenever they call on me, you know, because you you can't overthink, you know, and I said into an interview like three weeks ago that, you know, I've learned a lot since I've been overseas, you know, I didn't have the best of attitudes when I was in Jamaica, you know, and since I, I went I went to college, I've learned a lot, you know, about being patient and, and just wait until your time comes. So as I said before, you know, playing for my country is one of the greatest things that I would ever achieve, you know, but at the end of the day, I would just have to wait until they call on me. Yeah. Um, you spoke about being patient. A lot of Jamaican fans, reggae boys fans, are not so patient. They want to see a Javian Brown starting for the reggae boys. What are you trying to do to, you know, try to make that a reality? At the end of the day, it's a tough question to answer, you know. They want to see what they want to see. Yeah. But as I said to you, I don't let those outside stuff get into my head. You know, because if you focus on those stuff, you won't focus on the stuff that you have to do. And yeah. um, I just have to wait my time. You know, it's it's not my decision. It's coach's decision. I only could control what I can control, which is when I go on the field, I give 100%. You know, so it's not my decision to be a part of the squad or to even be in an 11. Yeah. Um. Club football versus international football. Uh, what's that transition like? It's different. It's different. It's way different, you know, because everyone wants to go to the World Cup. Everyone wants to play for their country. Everyone loves playing for their country, you know. So it's like nations. It's nations against nations, you know. Each and every country, like, they try to get their best of players to play for their country. So... There, there are players that's playing in like different, different leagues, top leagues in the world, you know. And club football is like, you know, it's still hard, still challenging, but I think international level is just different. It's different. Yeah, Mr. Brown. Um, in no November sixteen, Jamaica will be playing um the U.S. and the government said 5,000 fans will be allowed in the in the stands, right? So um, how you feel about fans being back in the stadium? And, um, and how is it important for fans uh, to the players? I mean, obviously, yes, fans is, 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 is great for, for, for players. You know, fans bring the energy, you know, especially in World Cup qualifying situations, you know, it's, it's really a great decision by the government to at least, you know, take into consideration what, what the Federation was saying to them and allowing fans into the stadium. Okay. Um, question. Do you think the JFF is doing a good job in spotting um, young talents uh, for them to get called up? For me, I can't answer that question. You know, um, <laughs> as I said, I'm a, I'm a player. You know, um, I don't make. So you see a lot decisions. of young players out there. Okay, good answer. Uh, good I answer. Make decision like that, you know, I, I can't. I can't answer that. That's that's their job. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, what what are our chances of qualifying for the World Cup? Um, one out of ten. What are our chances? <laughs> we have, I would say, ten because we're still in it. We're still in it. You know sure, what I was saying sure. that, uh, like stuff going on that no one has control over. You know, right. there's a lot of frustration in 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 a lot of stuff that going on that people people outside not seeing. You know, I would say the players are focused; they're ready to go. You know, but at the end of the day, as I said, stuff going on. You know, and it's so hard. You know, when you know 
you want to go to the World Cup and you you want better for your country, and stuff happens that just just throw you down to into the ground. You know you 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 feel really bad. But as I said, we, the 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 group is a great group. You know, and there's still there's still a lot of opportunities for the country to make it to the World Cup. Uh, okay. let, let me just cut it uh, there. Let me just cut it there, Tiga. Javin, right. one one more question. Is there after ask this question? Is there a divide between the local base players and the UK base players? Is there any form of divide? No, no. I think everyone bond really well. You know, everyone, everyone really love the country. You know, everyone wants to play for Jamaica. You know. I wouldn't say there there any divide. It's not. There's no. No one is divided from each other. Great. Nice. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, what coach Whitmore is like as a coach? I mean, I said he's not the most talking coach. He doesn't. He doesn't talk a lot. You know, that's his personality. You know, but he's a he's a great coach. You know, he probably sees the the, the game different from other people. You know, I haven't been around him a long time, so I don't I don't know much about him. But from what I've seen so far, he's he's a, he's a good coach. Okay. So who do you say are the lead, leaders in the in the in the Reggae Boy squad? I mean obviously like Andre Blake, Low and, and, and those guys are the leaders, but at the end of the day, everyone has to be a leader, you know. Right. Everyone has to be a leader for themselves and has to be a leader for the team. You can't be wanting someone to tell you one thing like five times. You know, you got to be a man yourself and, and, and know that it's, it's work time. Okay. All right. The best teammate you ever play with? Since I've been playing? Yeah. Ah, it's a lot. This guy that I'm playing with now, Ryan Gold. You know, mm. from Scotland, from our team. You know, you would. I would just imagine. You know, just such a talented player, but his work where he, his is tremendous. You know, he runs a lot. He tackles. He's like five foot five, but at the end of the day, you wouldn't believe that he's five foot five. You know, because he challenges for everything, and he he tried to work. He's not scared of of nothing. He's a number ten. You know, you know, a lot of number tens are scared. He's not. He's not that type of person. He, he, he works a lot. You know, and I've never seen a typical number ten who tackles so much, who try to win fifty-fifty challenges, and do everything he can. You know. Nice. All right. So, who's the best player you ever play against? Best uh, in the MLS or in in overall MLS uh, internationally. Best player I've ever played against is I would say probably. Mm. That seems odd. That tough one. <laughs> yeah, that tough one because you know there's a lot of a lot of great players in MLS, as I said to you. Mm. Experience, you know, players that play in the Premier League, Premier League, yeah. League you know, so it's, it's it's crazy, man. Like, crazy. It's, it's so many good players, especially attacking wise, man. Like the wingers yeah. and that you're gonna face, and the strikers that you're gonna face. They're top. They're top level players. Mm. Okay. All right. So a lot of good play play against. All right. So what is the highlight of your career so far? In terms of what? Uh your achievements and and anything. I don't get into as I tell you, I don't I don't really get into achievements and stuff like that. I'm still in season, still fighting right. for playoff and stuff like that. Right. You know, so I don't think about what I've achieved already because there's still more stuff to achieve. You know, you're okay. still you're fifth in the in the Western Conference. You know we're six now because I'm um, Minnesota won today, but we have a game. Oh. Okay, okay. So there's okay. still a chance for the for the playoff. Yeah, we have a great chance for the playoff. You know we we play on Tuesday against LAFC. You know which we have to get a result from that game. 
yeah. to be in contention. But we have two games leave that we think okay. you know, we have a great nice. chance to make in the playoff. All right, with three years left on your contract, uh, where do you self in three? Where where do you see yourself next three years? I don't I don't see myself anywhere else. Focus on the moment that I'm in right now. You know, I can't think of I want to be in Barcelona or I want to be in Real Madrid, Real Madrid team. I have to think in the moment that I am right now. You know, so in the White Caps, that's what I was saying. Okay, so you're just thinking about the white caps and maybe an extension. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. What is the hardest part of your journey thus far, and what do you do to um overcome it? The other part of my journey is, as I said, was being patient, concentrate right. on, and life itself. You know. Don't and um. Not to beat down on myself a lot, you know. I used to, I used to think that you know I can't make mistakes, and I didn't know how to overcome some of my mistakes that I make, you know. So that that's that's been it, really, you know. And being patient, work hard, try to stay focused, you know, and not not get ahead of myself, you know. And I really try to to be a chill person. You know, try to listen to music, try to watch TV a lot, you know, calm, which is calm my mind up. I have a couple of friends that I call daily, we joke around, but that's just it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so, Javin, what advice would you give to um, young people who want to become footballer? One advice I would give them Based off my experience, not based off yeah. everyone, because everyone experience is different. It's different. Is that as a young football player, there are a lot of opportunities in the world right now. You know, but with those opportunities come with challenges that you have to overcome daily, minute by minute, seconds by seconds, to make it to the next step. And as I said, I'm still learning those stuff, you know, as I have a lot more to learn, you know. Secondly, is just being patient, you know, and try to block out outside stuff, you know, when people get inside your head and telling you stuff and telling you you should be doing this and you should be doing that, you should be playing here, or you should yeah. be playing there. You know, because there are millions, billions of players in the world that wants to be playing professional. So at the end of the day, you just have to count it, count your blessings day by day. Yeah. So one advice, one more advice that I have for them is just that as a kid growing up in Jamaica, just look at your surrounding and look how many people you see, like failed. How many? friends you have that it's not doing the right thing how many family you you, you lose you you lost so at the end of the day try be the difference you know try be the difference in your community in your family i was the first person in my family to go to college i haven't finished my degree yet the first person in my family to be a professional football player you know i feel great for that yes but i still have more to do you know, yeah. and the background that I was coming out of, the violence that I see, some of my friends that passed away and, you know, the hurts that I have. Just, I just try to use those as my motivation, you know. So as I said before, just try to be patient, try to work hard and try to block out outside stuff. Uh, great. Well, well said. Well said, Javier. Um, yes. Where can the people find you on social media? Um, my, I don't really be on Twitter and stuff like that. You know, I'm not really a social media person. You know, I, even though I have Instagram, but my Instagram yeah. is Javain underscore twenty one. Yeah, you have any? You have anybody you want to big up? The fans, no. family. <laughs> no, I just want to say my most respect to each and everyone that that was there for me and still there for me you know 
that has been believed that that was that was believing me, telling me that you know, I can't be the person that I want as long as I put God first. You know, I want to give a strong shout out to my mom. Uh, always been my motivator. You know, always been there for me since day one. Want to shout out my dad. You know, we have a good relationship, but not the best. But if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been here on her right now. You know, so yeah. that's just it. Wow. Yes. Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Yeah, big up yourself. Yes. Javien, we'd like to thank you for joining the Sports Down the Middle team for this interview. Yeah. I, w- I would like to thank you guys for giving me the moment to, to share some stuff, you know. And if you guys need ever need anything more you could just text me on instagram and just as long as i have the time to do it i'll just i'll just give a give you guys a shout out yeah, no you. no problem no problem man and i'm um, very i would say a very touching interview with, with um javian yeah. brown you know a person jamaican will get to to know who is javian brown you know he's a very motivated young man as you guys can see you know i've made from him shoulder um He's patient, so those that want to push him in the team, he's patient, he's willing to wait his turn, you know, yes. he's willing to put PM in the hard dues. work, pay him dues, and, you know, we wish you all the best in, 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 in Vancouver with the Whitecaps, hope you can make the playoffs, um, we also wish you the best with the national team, hope you can, you know, get some more minutes under your belt, and, you know, win, go to the World Cup, because that's all we want, you know, to, to qualify for the World Cup. So, yeah. yes. So big up everybody once again, another interview. This has been another sports DTM interview, this time with reggae boy, Javien Brown, right back. Um, talented, talented, talented young player. Um, you know the, you know it go already, people. Smash the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and um, be blessed. I respect.